Okay, so here is a super intricate picture, right? As much as about as hard as this is going to get um, when it comes to pixels. I don't even know how many pixels are in here. There are so tiny. You can see up here how very, very small they are. Um, and then obviously right here, these are just so, so tiny. Um, but it's super easy to then create these um, numbers, these blocks, these cells that we can very easily manipulate and type into. And so will students. Um, so here, this is going to be um, the way that we can, I wanted to show you from scratch how you can create these fields. So let's say we wanted to have more numbers here, more problems. I am going to start here and it's just selecting. So here on the side, we're going to select a couple. Well, I'm selecting those because they are super tiny. So this is like, I want it to be about that big. I like that size. So once I have a size that I like, I just have to hit this button here that says merge cells and it merges them for me. Now that I know that I have a size that I like, I'm going to command copy, go one down and then paste. Go one down and then paste. Oh, that's not paste. Paste. What happened? Command copy, go one down and paste. Go one down and paste. And another one isn't going to fit down there. So that's okay. Maybe what I would do is I would command X to cut them. I know I'm very, um, sometimes I'm very anal in how I want them to look. So I'm going to command paste. And then I'm going to command um, X again to cut them. Command X because I wanted them more centered. And I'm going to go back off here to the side and paste okay so that is um, so I can have new more problems in here and now well, we need a field for the actual problem block so I'm gonna go directly next to it and select some of those it has to be up to there you know maybe a problem that is this big I'm trying to match them to the other cells. These are skinnier than the ones above there. But it's just to get you to see the gist of how um, you can make your field. So I'm going to command copy now, go one down, paste, go one down, paste, go one down, paste. Okay, now that I have all those, I need um, more fields on the side. Paste, paste, paste and then if I'm gonna put an, like numbers here and then I want their answers to be on the next one then I need another row that's why I have three rows on the other side paste paste and paste all right so this is how you make the fields and now that I have these well I can copy the whole thing go one to the side here and paste that whole block in there. And then go to the side and paste that whole block there. And then here on the side, it's not enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select all of these together. And I like putting little, I like putting um, emojis in there. So, not why are you doing this? Oh, it's because those are all, I don't know why, because I have this here, I'm gonna unmerge those. I like to clean it all, all up at the end. But again, that's not a necessity. You don't have to do that. So select them all, merge those together, and then I'll end up putting some sort of like little picture of a Christmas tree or um, a menorah or something like that to make sure that um, everyone's represented. So, all right, now here. I'm gonna put my problem numbers one, two, Ooh, they're not centered. Let's center them all. Centered, centered, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. All right, now for the answer. So let's say this was just a multiplication problem. Um, this is going to multiply to 15. This one will multiply to negative eight. This one will multiply to 
um, 24. This one will multiply to 48. And this one will multiply to 54. And so on and so forth, right? So we would have answers here. So I wanna show you how much easier it is to code it this way. This is the whole purpose of this. So what I do is I create the worksheet in advance and then I have my answers all set up and ready to go. So obviously this is really hard to see what field this is. So the way that I do that is I right click on my answer and then I'll go to the conditional formatting first and Right here, I know that this is field D21. Okay, so this is D21. So I would write that down. I would have a sheet of paper next to me with all of those written down. Oops, sorry. So that when I start coding, I walked away from the computer. So that when I start coding, I, um, I have all of them already set up on somewhere where I can easily find them. So again, this was D21 and 15, and then I would go to the one at the bottom, cancel there, go to the one at the bottom, cancel, cancel, find out what this one is, conditional formatting, this one's D44. So at D44, I have negative eight, cancel, and then I would go at the bottom, um, same thing, right? Conditional formatting, and this one's D67, and D67 is 24, and then I would go to the next one, so on and so forth, okay? So I'm just gonna do the first three, and then you're gonna see exactly how simple it is, and hopefully I will finish this all up, um, and then I'll post a link to the activity for free, um, so you can just copy it and then edit it later if you want to. So now that I know the first three, let's say if, um, for the pixels, if you wanted to turn it into a puzzle, which is my favorite, I just start highlighting from the corner and making um, like puzzle pieces, like things that look like puzzle pieces, right? So I would select all these and then maybe I need, a and, there, and it's okay if there's overlap, it's gonna remember which one came first, okay? so. Right there, that's my puzzle piece. So I'm gonna go right click, conditional formatting, custom formula, and I want D21, that was my 15, so equals D21. I need a dollar sign here. Now instead of putting equals, this is what we would do before. We would set equal a number and then let it be a color, but I'm just gonna say actually not equal to. So if D21 is anything other than the number 15, notice how now it turned back because that's true, it is 15. But if it's anything other than the number 15, I'm gonna have it turn red. Done. So now when I go here and I erase it, there's my red puzzle piece. And when I put 15 back in here, the whole thing turns the color it's supposed to. Now let's say I put the wrong answer in here, 12. Well, 12 is not 15, so it stays red. So this is super, super helpful if there's um, puzzle pieces and things like that, where um, like if your answers, not puzzle pieces, if your answers are exact answers and you can't have other options. So for example, I make a lot of activities that have multiple answers, like for example, one half, but students can write one half as one over two. They can also write 0.5. Some students will write 0 0.5 other students will write 0 0.50. So I have to account for all of those. That doesn't work for these types. Um, so again, but if there's only one answer, which is the majority of the ones that we do, then this does work. And let's say you like the sporadic ones, the ones that just pop up in different places. Well, then you can just select little tidbits of it. So I'll select that and then a little piece of Buddy's face and a little piece of the Grinch and right here and so on and so forth. I'm just selecting little tiny pieces just like you would have if you were selecting pixels and then i'm going to go conditional formatting custom formula now i'm going to do the d44 for negative eight so that's going to be equal d44 and if d44 is anything but negative eight now watch all of them turn the right color because that's true 
I'm going to have that turn red. And now when I go and I delete this, boom, there's all those little pixels. So much easier and it saves so much time because you didn't have to create this um, pixel picture. Um, I hope you find this helpful and that you find it useful. If you do, let me know um, in that Facebook group that someone just created with all the pixel activities. Um, there's so many free things, so many there, um, so many activities for us to share. Um, hopefully you find something in there that you like. Bye.